This time, one of the most intimidating competitions is open to new shooters. It's Precision Rifle in Tennessee. Plus, Japan's historic yet unreliable revolver. And juniors breaking clays at the SCTP National. This is Shooting USA, reporting the stories of America's shooting sports. The Precision Rifle series of matches was created in 2012 to attract the best long-range precision shooters in the nation, and it has. Hundreds of law enforcement officers, military personnel compete along with fans of the discipline. But the equipment is expensive and the challenges can be intimidating to first-timers. Reading the wind, dialing corrections on the scope, and getting into difficult positions, not to mention the distances. Well, that's why a couple of industry leaders have created a match to introduce new shooters to the sport. John is both a reporter and a shooter at the Bushnell Gap Grind. The sport of precision rifle shooting, arguably one of the most expensive, gear heavy, and intimidating sports to get started in. Wildcat calibers, shots to a thousand yards and beyond, where's a new shooter gonna learn to do that? Well, Shannon Kay and George Gardner have combined to put together a match format that will do exactly that. Help an amateur shooter get into the sport. So we're at K&M Precision in West Tennessee for the Gap Grind Pro-Am, a match that got me hooked on the sport last year and continues to hook new shooters. And there's more new here than just the 70 or so amateur shooters. This is the first big match at the new home of Shannon Kay's K&M Precision. We really took everything that, that I did in Florida and took some things that we didn't like or some opportunities that we might not have had to, not, not have been that feasible in Florida and came here and, and redid it and moved our operations up here, continue to work with George and Bushnell um, and, and move this event from Florida to Tennessee. Uh, the facility supports it perfectly. The shooters love it. It's really uh, taken the industry by storm, and, and we're, really in our, we're still in our infancy, so we're, we're very, very proud. It's a sprawling layout with known distance ranges past 1,200 yards. There's an urban range, as well as an unknown distance range. There are two moving target systems, covered firing lines, as well as permanent structures to shoot from. There's also a clubhouse and shooter's pavilion, it's a top flight facility located near Jackson, Tennessee. It really is a national level facility. I mean, we really are, are designed primarily for our training. Uh, I mean, obviously we cover all spectrums, carbine, pistol, but we're really focused on the precision rifle aspect. Shannon's tailor-made facility is one part of the equation. The other comes from master gunsmith, George Gardner. Um, it's just kind of one of those things. I mean, I got a lot of customers who love to shoot. Uh, some of them might be a little bit intimidated by shooting their first match. I've heard a million times, hey, come shoot a match. Well, I've never shot one before. You hear that so much. This gives them that chance to shoot their first one. They're with somebody who's been there, done that, and it just makes them feel comfortable and kind of takes that excuse out of their mind. We started the Gap Grind four years ago. Me and Shannon kind of got together and thought we'd give a little bit higher, fast-paced match. We always had some stage called the Grinder where there's a lot of running and endurance involved. The Grind was still in the format at the 2014 match in Florida. Tom Fuller and I were teamed up and posted one of the better scores for the event. But the physicality is not for everyone. We decided to take it from a high endurance pace match to a pro-am, so get some new shooters into the sport, guys that uh, normally are like, well, I just never shot a match before. Well, give them the, the place to make that first match happen. Day one of making it happen is for sight in and for experienced shooters to meet and work with their amateur shooters, like Christine Allen helping Justin Garner. Leave them down and then you can take it and go out over the window with them. Okay. And, and lock and see how that works. Christine's really helped me uh, learn this, using some of the specialized equipment and uh, how to set up my body position a little better. Not a lot of, of precision work, more pistol and carbine. Um, so I'm. Um, I'm learning a lot. Or Jim Gilliland working with experienced three-gun shooter Chuck Anderson. 
table? Yeah. It's, it's the same way here. Like when you come when you come off the top, right I would go come all the way out here, and you have all this body contact. Like I said, it's just like shooting from prone now. As opposed to, you know, instead of being out like this. For me, the first order of business is finding my amateur. Just trying to find the guy. It turns out Jason is in the middle of what could be described as a disaster. My primary optic went down. Um, it wasn't holding zero at all. So the day before a match, I had to pop my scope off. Luckily, I brought it back up, had to get it mounted up and get it zeroed. We're gonna put a quick bore sight on his gun so we had to change his optic and get 100 yard zero from there. Kind of like battlefield uh, surgery right now. Basically. At this point, my role is more for moral support, but this is part of team building. It was really, really stressful. Thankfully, John was able to get in and help me out. He helped me out with my tools and helped me get everything straightened out. But yeah, that, that was about the worst way to start my first PRS match. Of all my nightmares, it came true. Second paper from the right, so there's... Yep. And it is totally clean. There you go. Just a little low. That's just a touch low. I mean, not even a touch. I'm like, maybe a touch. Yeah. You gonna hold that or you gonna put that tent on? Yeah, I'm gonna put the tent on. I'll take that. You're in the dot. With that, Jason is back on track and the team match starts in the morning. A big part of precision competition is confidence in your equipment. And for Jason, an optic swap and re-zero is not the way to build that confidence. Luckily, he's got a backup, but a lot of our time to work on our positions and our communication has been lost. The team events are next as our coverage of the Bushnell Gap Nine continues. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&P Optimal Grip Angle, four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size, a light crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0, advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by the M&P by Smith & Wesson, advanced by design. It's a big deal for me to be named as a pro in this match. It's a lot of responsibility managing my own setup and at the same time making sure my teammate Jason is set to go. He's already overcome the hassle of an optic swap. Now it's time to put rounds down range in his first precision rifle series match. 0700. It's match day one at the Gap Grind Pro-Am. This is the team event. Teams will shoot and be scored together. For Jason and I, the first event will be the stage called Blue Ambush. Eight rounds each, target at 600 yards. Okay. Target one. 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 Get back. Get back. Cease fire! I'm good, make weapon safe. Oh, we're out of time. The time crunch is a similar experience for Chuck Anderson. Went a little bit long on time, had one round left at the end. Um, felt, uh, felt really wobbly inside the car. It's definitely different than what I'm used to shooting. Cease fire! Unload, make safe. Time management is key in these events, and it will be especially important on our next stage. Shoot house at 450. Eight shots each alternating, and each shot must come from a different position in the shoot house. And if there's time, shooters end up on the roof for their final shots. Do your last well, two positions if, down there at the top. If, 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 if amateurs first, yeah. let me start off the square. That'll work. Awesome. I like it. I do too. Our plan is set. Time to execute. Shooters ready? I think so. All right, engage. Impact! Kneeling 
position worked out really well. Seated, I wasn't so good, but kneeling, got the wee bad bags up in there, made a nice position. Jason started us off with a hit, so that's the way to do it. We're finding our groove and making the hits, and it's a good thing. Our next event is the Team Hustle. Three static targets out past 450, and then the 500-yard mover. Each shooter must hit the static targets marked M1, M2, and M3 in order before engaging the mover. Shooter, stand by! Good streak. Yeah, yeah, that was a good that one. That was man. solid. Jason led off, and we went one for one up the hill on static targets. Then we got into the mover, and he and I both found our groove and just ready. Pop, 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 pop. That's a good way to end the uh, the yeah, morning. Session. Good way to break for lunch. Good job, bro. We were lighting them up at that point. Um, a lot of fun. That was a really good opportunity for John and I to get to work together and work out our communication. In keeping with the goal of time management, the stage Clear the City offers each shooter 10 rounds on bad guy targets in the urban structures and the bus. All shots must come from a position on the roof structure. Stephanie Payne has her plan worked out. And we'll go left side first, so left window, left window, right window, right window. The stage is one of the more difficult in the match, with smaller targets and the difficult structure to shoot from. Another stage with a challenging shooting position is a staple at the gap grind, the partner assisted positional. Five shots each through the barricade, with only your partner to build your position on. Bipods, bags, or slings allowed. It's gonna be loud, dude. It's a tough position for me that becomes tougher as my elbow comes off my knee. Make safe. The final challenge is the KYL, or Know Your Limitations drill. A common challenge at precision rifle events, four targets of decreasing size. Hit the first one and you get a point and the option to shoot the second target. Hit that and get two points and the option to continue. Stop any time and bank the points earned, or press the luck and go for the sweep. But a miss along the way ends the event, and the shooter scores a zero. This is an event that I've had some success at. I can get a feel for how I'm hitting as I move through the larger targets. Three hits in the bag. All gone, just like that. That's the pain of the KYL. There's a fine line between greatness and a zero. Plus the added bitterness of the whole, if I'd have just stopped, well, that nags on. Well, I've got something to help that part of my game. I'll show you more on that later in the show. Next, the teams stay together, but now each shooter is scored individually, giving the new shooters the real feel of precision competition. Tradition meets innovation. Ready for any competitive arena. The new Colt Competition Pistol, featuring dual spring recoil system. Novak's new adjustable rear sight and fiber optic front sight. Competition ergonomics. National match barrel in 9mm and 45. Innovation at a competitive price. American made and only available at Colt stocking dealers. Colt, built one at a time. Proven every round. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Bear Customs 1911s, hand-fitted to perfection, because you'll accept nothing less. For any new shooter, it can be a big step moving from a half-day club match format into a larger, full-on, two-day competition. There are all sorts of variables that come into play. What did you eat? More importantly, what did you drink? How well did you rest? There can be all sorts of distractions that can affect a second day performance. 
The two-day format of the Bushnell Gap Grind gives the new shooters the experience of a big Precision Rifle Series match, where getting into the flow of the match is key and staying connected to it overnight and into the second day is every bit as important. The team aspect of the match is over. Pros and AMs shoot for individual scores now. Today is a completely individual match for both the pro and the amateur. But we are still helping the amateur. Once the pro is off the clock, he gets in there right alongside his amateur and helps him out. You just engage the same targets in four positions. One amateur benefiting from the guidance of his pro is junior shooter Colin Murphy. 30 seconds There are just a handful of juniors involved with precision shooting competition. And by the looks of things, Colin will add to that number. First big match, I've shot a couple local matches and I've loved them. On all events on day two, the pro shoots first. Impact, target. Impact, target. Impact, target. The AM can't give any corrections, but the pros can. That is if there's something to see. Good left, give me a half target down. White car, front seat. Give it a left favor. I don't know where those are going, bro. There you go. That's it, I'm done. It's a tough deal when you're shooting up a hill into a car and there's hostage targets, there's no dirt to catch anything when you're off, and it's challenging, man. It's a challenge that has its rewards. The biggest is helping new people get involved. This is a very addictive sport. It's a lot of fun. If you've never shot a precision rifle, if you've never heard a bullet smack steel at distance and seen the splash, first time it happens, you're hooked. And the only way to get better at it is to come out here and shoot against people that are better than you are and try to learn from them and their experiences. It's a growing sport. Um, it's fun. Uh, it has tactical and practical implications. So you get all the professionals from the military, uh, the law enforcement, or your enthusiast marksman that wants to come out and, hey, I want to improve these skills. And, and once we introduce these shooters to it, it's just, it takes off. Well, you already know I'm hooked, and I've got a new rifle that fuels my addiction. This specialized piece of equipment is one I've been waiting to show all of you. This is the Surgeon Scalpel in 6.5 Creedmoor, and the system is built around the Surgeon 591 short action and 308 bolt. It's a custom built design with two lugs that's as slick and as smooth as anything out there. The bolt is sporting the Surgeon tactical bolt knob, but there are other options if that's a little too aggressive for you. The action has an integrated 20 MOA mill standard 1913 rail. The barrel is a 26 inch heavy palma with a one and eight twist that's been fluted. The bipod is from Sierra 7 and the barreled action is laid up in a Macmillan A5 chassis that's fully adjustable for cheek weld and length of pull. Now for the optic, of course, I've gone Bushnell Tactical. This is the XRS 4.5 to 30 by 50, built on a 34 millimeter tube. It has tenth of mil adjustments for elevation and windage. Now this XRS has the Horus H59 reticle. Initially, the reticle looks very busy, but it can be handy in PRS events where there isn't time to make elevation or windage adjustments, or in some cases, you aren't allowed to make scope adjustments once the course of fire has begun. Now, you can look at this package and tell that it isn't going to be cheap. The Bushnell Tactical XRS is a little under $1,900, and the Surgeon Scalpel in this configuration, a little over $5,100. Coming next, Jim's got the story of Japan's first double action sidearm that may have been the worst. Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at ShootingUSA.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. I will always place the needs of the community. The needs of the mission above my own. I will never accept defeat 
I will never, 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 never quit. Never fail a fellow officer. Never leave a comrade behind. I will never surrender. I am never out of the fight. You are bound by a higher calling. Demand the same from your gear. Blackhawk. Honor as a way of life. Shooting USA is brought to you by Bushnell Performance Optics. And by Colt. Built one at a time. Proven every round. Any of our ancestors who faced the Japanese in World War II would tell you of their fearsome reputation, but it would help turn the tide of war that the Imperial Army was not equipped with the best firearms. Their bolt-action rifles were no match for America's M1 Garand, and a widely issued sidearm was no match for the Colt 1911. But the Japanese issued and carried the Type 26 revolver for more than 50 years. A Type 26 that is now one of history's guns. It is the first double action sidearm the Japanese Army ever carried in combat and the first Japan ever built a 9mm six-shot revolver adopted to keep pace with firearms advances by other world military powers. What we have here today is one of the world's more unusual military revolvers. It's a Japanese Type 26. It gets its name from the, uh, uh, the fact that it was adopted in the 26th year of the Meiji Emperor's reign. The 26th year of the Emperor's reign, that's 1893 to the rest of us and carried in battle for half a century till the end of the Second World War. Early wars were used during the, uh, the Boxer Rebellion, used during the Russo-Japanese War. Uh, and again, it was, it was carried by second-line troops all the way up through World War II. The Type 26 borrowed heavily from existing revolver designs in Europe and even America, typical of firearm inventors in the day. It has a top break like a Smith & Wesson. In fact, the revolver actually replaced a Smith & Wesson design in the Imperial Army's arsenal. The single action number three, better known as the Smith & Wesson Russian. Prior to this time, the Japanese were using a variant of the Smith & Wesson Russian, which to my mind is a superior arm, but the Japanese decided they wanted to have a gun of their own, and uh, so this is what they ended up with. And in several important ways, the new Type 26 proved inferior to the American firearm it replaced. It's double action only. One bad feature. Uh, you cannot fire it single action. Hammer, uh, obviously being double action, has no hammer spur whatsoever and has a rather long trigger pull. Consequently, accuracy on it is not tremendous. Clearly a deficiency, but not as bad as another of the gun's undesirable traits its free-spinning cylinder. The cylinder only locks up when the trigger is pulled. That means, let's say you've got, you fired three rounds and you got three live rounds in there, you put it back in your holster, you pull it out again, all you have to do is brush that cylinder and you could be firing on a cartridge that you've already uh, fired before. Definitely uh, not advantageous uh, you know, when you're in combat. Absolutely not. One more drawback is the revolver's relatively anemic cartridge. This is not your modern 9mm Luger. It fires a proprietary round, a 9mm Japanese revolver round. It loads just like a regular Smith & Wesson. Simultaneous extraction, obviously. Again, nothing exotic. And now she's ready to go. The cartridge is a black powder round, never chambered in any other firearm and clearly lacking in knockdown power. Certainly not the match of the, the, you know, the 44 Russian round that the Japanese were using in the Smith & Wesson. For all its failings, Gary believes the Type 26 isn't all bad. It is well built and rugged, just not the equal of other military revolvers of its day. You get your Webleys and your Colts and your Smith & Wessons and your Nagants and your uh, LaBelles. I mean, they're all superior to this piece, but 
Is it a bad gun? No, it's just not a wonderful gun. Even so, the Type 26 has earned a place in history, if only because it is the first military sidearm Japan did not import. It's just an interesting piece. Everything doesn't have to be the best. Sometimes just something being the worst is interesting too. Would I want to be uh, issued with this thing? Heck no. You know, it would be right at the bottom of my list of, of military firearms that were available at the time. The Type 26, the worst revolver design of World War II. But no less historic to collectors than the Smith & Wesson and Colt revolvers that also went to war, along with John Browning's design for the historic 1911. Well, still ahead, John shows us how reloading equipment is made inside Hornady. That's next. This is custom gun making, hand fitting, slide to frame, hand cutting the magwell, blending the surfaces of the slide, the frame, and the beaver tail. At every step, a Les Bear Custom 1911 is hand fitted to tolerances no CNC machine can match for match grade accuracy. And a Les Bear Custom 1911 is priced at one third of what you'd pay any other gun maker. See all the 1911s and rifles at lesbear.com. Shooting USA is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. For Hornady, the reloading side of the house is one they are very passionate about. Like all of their brands, innovation is a top priority. Over the years, that commitment to developing the state of the art for each of the reloading processes has led to a number of breakthroughs for the consumer. But sometimes, innovation at the production level leads to better, more affordable entry-level equipment. Exactly the case with the American series of dies. In Alda, Nebraska, Hornady is producing a new series of reloading dies, and it starts with a 12-foot section of American forged 7 8 cold rolled steel bar stock. Joe Fielder loads the sections into the Tornos Swiss style lathe. This is a significant moment because this is the last time hands will touch the material before it becomes either a sizing die or a cedar die. There are 13 steps in the three minute process, taking raw bar stock all the way to a die in white. The precision of the machinery that we use now to, to make a die is so dramatically better than what I was doing back in the 70s when I was working out in, in the shop and running a lathe and, and you had second ends and all these other operations and now it's all done off of one CNC that is just gnats, but too perfect. Ensuring that accuracy is Andy Timmerman's job, measuring all of the dimensions so every piece meets the SAMI specifications. The key is the machine. When we look at new CNC equipment, they've made such strides in the last 10 or 12 years or so with the CNC equipment that yes, we can feed in a raw piece of bar stock and drop out a fully finished die that all we need to do is heat treat and then put a final smooth polish onto the inside and it's done. From there, it's on to assembly and packaging. Maria Contreras assembles and inspects each American series die set. Packaging starts with the case holder, then the die set. And with that, the package is closed and sealed, ready for delivery. But a die set is worthless without a press. And in another area of this facility, the lock and load AP press is getting final machining. Nick Christensen loads the powder coated cast frames into the Haas four axis mill. There are two positions for each frame on the fixture. It will take a little over 45 minutes and 40 tools to finish each press body. Then it's on to Steve McMahon's workbench for assembly. After a visual inspection, it's the lock and load die bushings, the key feature that makes the AP press so easy to set up. Next, Steve turns his attention to the ram assembly, installing the drive shaft and the index wheel. Then the ram is added to the press body. Now it's the toggle and the pawls that will move the index wheel with each stroke of the handle. 
An alignment tool is used to position the toggle. Then the toggle pin is installed. The AP links are next. These give the press the mechanical advantage needed to perform all of the processes in the sequence. Final step here, installing the pull handle. Steve now installs the subplate over the drive hub on top of the ram. A shell plate is added to test the timing. Any adjustments are made to the pawls on the toggle to get everything aligned perfectly. Finally, a test die is used in each position on the press. Last step for the lock and load AP press, packaging. Each box is weighed to ensure nothing has been left out. Then it's into the shrink wrapper, ready to go to the consumer. All of it done with precision and value as the focus to give every reloader the best products at the best price. Making it affordable is certainly important because when you start, you're gonna start probably with the opening price point. Once we get you in our system, we think you might wanna start buying other stuff from us. And so, uh, if we come up with some cool ideas and innovative and have you go, hey, that's kinda cool or fun, um, we think that'll help grow everything. It makes it better for all of us. The Lock and Load AP Progressive Press and the American Series of Reloading Dies. A great way to get started in reloading. And once you're done, run some of that ammo through the new MMP Shield. Jim will show you next. The next evolution in single stage press technology. The Lock and Load Iron Press from Hornady. The heavy duty cast iron frame provides industry leading superior strength featuring the available automatic priming system, patented shell holder platform, accessory mounting deck, and lock and load bushing system. The Hornady Lock and Load Iron Press will deliver match accurate ammunition round after round, year after year. Shooting USA is brought to you by Comptac Everyday Carry Holsters and by STI and the continuing evolution of the 1911. The key to success in any of the shooting sports is practice, but when it comes to Precision Rifle Series competition, practice gets a little tricky just due to the distances present in the sport. Well, Innovative Targets has a solution, creating custom KYL systems designed to be used at specific distances. This is the system they put together for me, designed to be shot at 300 yards, which is the maximum distance I have out at the farm. It's a five target array, starting with a three MOA or nine inch round. Targets decrease in size by a half MOA or at 300 yards, that's an inch and a half until you get to the little guy. One MOA at 300 is three inches. All of the plates are built from 3 8 inch thick AR500 steel. They're fully reversible and they hang from the patent pending NSD rotation system. Innovative Targets built this one for me custom and they'll do the same for you or choose from one of their standard sizes. Prices start at 600 bucks. Jim? I've got news on a firearm designed for closer range work, the Smith & Wesson Shield. It was introduced just three years ago at the SHOT Show. We showed you then the team building the shields, and here they are again, posing with Smith President James Debney to celebrate the assembly of the One Millionth Shield. And this is one of the variations that have been introduced along the way, the Performance Center Ported Shield with the ported barrel lined up with six lightning cuts in the shield slide. The porting is particularly helpful in reducing muzzle flip and felt recoil in the 40 caliber shield, but you can also choose the 9 millimeter version. Julie Golub did quite well demonstrating one in the IDPA backup gun match. The ported shield also gets an enhanced trigger set at six pounds with a positive reset for quick follow shots, even if you're not Julie. And there's high-vis fiber optic sights, green in front, red in the rear for an easy to see sight picture. In 40 caliber, you've got six or seven rounds in a choice of magazines. In nine millimeter, it's seven or eight rounds. Unloaded, the shield weighs just over a pound. It's only an inch thick and it's highly accurate. So that tells you why there are a million shields out there. 
the top of the line Performance Center Portage Shield as a suggested retail of 519, which means you'll find it selling for under $500. And coming next, junior shooters on three and a half miles of trap fields, the SCTP Nationals are next. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&P Optimal Grip Angle, four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size, a light crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0, advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by the M&P by Smith & Wesson, advanced by design, and by Hoppies, the gun care people since 1903. Of all the youth shooting programs, there is one that continues to grow exponentially each year. That's the Scholastic Clay Target Program, or SCTP. It started with a few hundred youngsters shooting trap. Now there are more than 13,000 kids across the country shooting trap skeet and sporting clays, and training for the biggest event of the year, the National Championships in Illinois. They are sons and daughters, nieces and nephews, granddaughters and grandsons, and they are the next generation of shooters. Count of three. One, two, three. 3,000 of them from 26 states are here at the SCTP National Championships opening ceremonies. The crowds are bigger every year, more parents, um, you know, just seeing, uh, seeing the families out here. I think that's the, the biggest part of it. You know, it's family friendly. It's a great atmosphere. You know, it's a, it's a, it really is a festival of, of youth shooting sports and a celebration of our Second Amendment rights and, and uh, Americans. Teams and states are introduced one by one. Let's welcome Michigan. With coaches from the volunteer state bringing the most kids to this event. With 594 registered athletes for this event, let's welcome Tennessee. This is their uh, World Series. This is, this is it. This is the big show for them. And I think word's getting out that they're all having fun. Uh, we give over, over 1,000 uh, medals to, to the kids that are here and over 144 trophies to the team. So uh, it's a pretty big event, and uh, our numbers are, um, are, are showing it. And there is only one place that can accommodate a championship of this size. 120 trap fields spanning three and a half miles at the World Shooting Complex in Sparta, Illinois. And at the SCTP Nationals, you better believe every field is in use. Youngsters, some barely as tall as their shotgun, plus high school students, and even college students like Brandy Napoli all compete at the Nationals. It's a passion. It's definitely something that it's necessary in my life to be able to do. It's fun. And some travel cross country to be here. Brandy's team is the California Junior Clay Breakers. I definitely made a big trek. I drove 39 hours. Kind of neat that we come from such a small group, all the way from California, compete with all these other people, and seem to be able to hold our own pretty well. So it's a great place to come, a good opportunity for the kids to compete with such a large number of people from all over the country, and it's just a great experience. And some teams take the experience even further. The Wisconsin Union Grove Broncos camp at the week-long event creating unity among the team while holding down the expenses in an area where hotel rooms are in high demand. I enjoy being able to be with all of them and then having a tent for all of us to like eat at and gather around before shooting and stuff. At night we play cards and listen to music, we go, we go for walks and a bunch of other things. So it's pretty cool. And what a setup. Like most teams here, the Broncos shoot trap with birds flying from the center house. But other disciplines are growing in participation. 
The SCTP opened the door to sporting clays several years ago. Now, nearly a thousand kids are competing in this very popular shotgun sport that simulates hunting. And in skeet too, a challenging sport that requires leading crossing birds. Marty Moore coaches the Southern Shooting Sports team from Tennessee, and he recognizes the importance of the SCTP and preserving this American tradition. The SCTP is all about the kids, and it's great. I'm 54 years old. I feel like I'm 15 with the kids, but uh, once it's gone, it's gone. So it's good to, it's good to show the kids shooting. It's, it's, a great, it's a great thing, it's a great thing. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the kids go bird hunting, a lot of the kids want to play soccer, softball. All of my kids love to shoot, so it's a good thing. They love to shoot. Coaches are really the lifeblood of our programs, and uh, they work hard on a volunteer basis to get out there and, and uh, make the grow. So, you know, we're really going to kind of sharpen our focus and see what else we can do to help coaches, um, you know, help support them, provide them with more education and, and tools to, to get the job done. We had fun, didn't we? Good job, buddy. Start them while they're young, and their future can be bright with college coaches at the Nationals with opportunities for the future. That's next. Plus, lessons from an Olympian returning to teach. On March 29, 1911, the armed forces adopted a pistol that would change the world. For decades to come, men and women relied on the most trusted pistol in history as they fought the toughest battles to protect our freedom. Today, we celebrate another great victory, introducing the all-new Colt Competition Pistol, designed for heroes, created for champions. We didn't just make history, we're still making it. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Bear Customs 1911s, hand-fitted to perfection because you'll accept no less. Finishing high school does not mean shooting trap skeeter sporting clays has to end. Not with opportunities to join a growing number of college shotgun teams. 300 colleges and universities now offer shooting programs in the U.S. And at the national championships in Sparta, the SCTP is paving the way for these future student athletes. Just beyond these clubhouse doors, there's a chance to turn a first impression into a lasting one. Anytime we get the opportunity to come out and look at some of the high school talent and the young people that are available, maybe for the future of our program, we're gonna be there. That is exactly why we're here and that's why the, all the other colleges are here, is to hopefully gain some talent and some characters and some pillars of society later on down the road. Sean Dulaheri and Brett Erickson are two of a dozen college coaches recruiting athletes for their shotgun teams. They're both former Olympians. I, I really enjoy it, and that's kind of one of the reasons I, you know, I, I didn't coach at the Olympic level anymore is to come down with more of a grassroots program and give these kids a, a path to follow. It's a neat opportunity for these kids to take their shooting to the next level and, go, and, and get in the college education. And like Brett, these coaches recognize the growing trend in the shooting sports at the collegiate level, with some schools hosting varsity teams with the opportunity of a scholarship. I'm hoping for a scholarship for him to further his education and to get to be able to shoot and compete. I talked to the Lindenwood head coach and he was real pleasant to be around and talk to and get to understand what college is and what the future holds. I'm very blessed to have parents that, you know, are there for me and can support me throughout and keep going so I can shoot through college. And uh, it's a very great experience. This may be the biggest tournament of some of their lives, but there's, it doesn't end here. And nor does it end at the Olympic Games either. There's always another target to be roped. There's always another duck to hunt. There's always another dove to shoot or a, a quail. One of America's most successful Olympians is proof of that, and it is why Vincent Hancock is also here at the SCTP National Championships in Sparta. I'm not here because I love it. You know, I started an SCTP uh, when it first came around in skeet and sporting clays. Uh, so back in 2003, it was one of the few groups that made it out from Georgia, and, and my passion is working with kids. I absolutely love being here, helping to grow the sport, just be a part of it, try to give back. 
Today, the two-time Olympic gold medalist and world champion is teaching a group of young ladies his technique. Oh. As soon as you see the target clearly, pull the trigger. Oh. Just like that. It was awesome. It was a great learning experience. I learned a lot of good tips that I didn't know before. My mount was a little bit off, so that really helped once he helped me with that. It relaxed me, and I can hold my mount a little bit longer now. It's all about the kids, because our, our next generation of leaders, of athletes, of just recreational shooters, they're here right now. And to breathe the, the love of shooting, love of outdoors, into those kids at a young age, that's what SCTV is all about. I'm being picky, I know, but that's okay. <laughs> And Vince is especially fond of seeing more young women compete in the sport and the parents who help keep their dream alive. The girls are close to my heart because I've got two little ones at home. And seeing all the girls come out and having f so much fun, and especially seeing the parents come out too, that's one of the biggest keys to me is to get the parents involved. And more parents are getting involved. One, two, three, go Arizona! In the case of the Arizona Hotshots from Xavier College Prep School, the team needed the school's blessing to start competing. We went to the nun. We said, can we start a shooting team? And I gotta say, God loves Sister Lynn. She said, absolutely, let's do it. Just make sure nobody gets hurt. Nobody has. But it's been just a great time to spend so much time with, and quality time with both my daughters and the other girls and to see them all really develop into wonderful young ladies. And the feeling of spending time together is mutual, up and down the three and a half mile range. They put a lot of time into making sure that we have whatever we need when we're shooting. And if a gun malfunctions, they're right there checking everything out, making sure it's okay. So it's really good. Oh. It means dedication from the parents. It really shows how people come together and there's such support given from everyone that it's so greatly appreciated by all of us um, beyond words. One, two, three, hot shots! Families coming together at the range, all 13,000 of them. That's how many kids participate in SCTP across the country. If you'd like to join or start a team, we have more information for you on our website. Or if Precision Rifle is more your thing, we have links at shootingusa.com. For all of us, I'm Jim Scout, and shoot safely, shoot often, and keep them in the 10 ring.